Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to make the fattest subs. Yes, fat sub. That is what we want in our music. If we want the bass to punch through on the speakers, on the sound system, on the dance floor, and make people go, mm, that is a fat sub. In my opinion, there are two key features that make your subs fat. One of them, and crucially, is adding harmonics, and the other one is upper frequency layering. So I'm going to walk you through how you can make your own fat sub in today's video. The timestamps are below in the description if you want to skip to your favorite section. Let's get into it. We're going to use Serum. So firstly, let's talk about the basis of a sub. What is it made up of in its fundamental tone? Well, a sine wave is the most common wave used for a sub. And we can get to a sine wave by clicking on the drop down menu, going to analog and to BD sine. And now we have our MIDI. So that's our sine wave in its purest form. Bring your random down to zero so that it's not randomly triggering the waveform every time. The next thing you want to do is create a pitch drop in your sine wave. And you can do that by coming on to envelope two. Remember envelope one is your master envelope for the global VST. Envelope two, we can drag that up to the course pitch and we can stick it on unidirectional. So shift and alt or shift and option on a Mac and drag the slider down and then just change the shape of your envelope so that the attack is super fast, the decay is really short and the release comes out like this. And then attenuate on your course pitch to taste. So let's listen to this. Okay, so that's the basic fundamental root note frequency of the sine wave done. We can check it and we can see where it sits in the frequency spectrum. So we have a nice root note sub fundamental there in span, which is what I'm using to analyze. The next thing we're going to do is add the crucial harmonics. And this is where you make your sub come alive and fill so much more space than it would do if it was just this pure sine wave by itself. So to get your harmonics, come into the wavetable editor. So this little pencil here, and you can see the harmonics of the sine wave. What we're going to do is just drag over so that it erases these ones. And now you just have the one fundamental harmonic in bin one. I'm going to add bin three or harmonic three, the third harmonic. Just drag that up slightly and you can see that the waveform is changing shape. And we actually want something like this as opposed to just a pure sine wave because this positive and negative waveform space, if we increase with the harmonic, what happens is that the wave is filling more of those spaces over time. So perceived loudness is achieved by having dynamics over time. And the more of that space that you fill, the more that the listener perceives that to be loud, which is where we get our fat, fat, loud subs. Um, so yeah, so increase this. But you can see, obviously, when you start to bring it up like this, you've got extra peaks. You've got a double peak. And this actually reduces the loudness over time because you've just got a tiny one here, a tiny one here, a tiny one here, and tiny one here. And that is going to reduce your loudness over time. So you want just a nice, full, fat, single peak on the positive and the negative like that. And we can check using a oscilloscope. I like to use Melder's Moscilloscope. You can download it from the internet and you can see in this scope that we're having a accurate representation of what we've just done in Serum. So now you can hear that the sub is pushing through in the mix a lot more and it just seems louder. Back into the main interface of Serum, and now we're going to add some layering. So this sine wave and this sub, as it is at the moment, could be good enough. You could just use this as your sub. It depends what you're going to use for your bass and how you're going to add that on top of your sub. But layering is a really good way to get your sub to push through up in the mix in addition to what you already have in Oscillator A. So we're going to activate Oscillator B, and we're going to come to the drop-down menu to base 
classic shapes, instead of using a sine wave, we're going to cycle through on the wavetable position to a triangle wave. So a triangle wave, it's not as buzzy as a square wave, it's kind of in between the sine wave and the square wave, and it just gives you those harmonic textures that really make your sub stand out in the upper frequencies of the mix. Now obviously we don't want this to clash with our sub, so we're going to increase on the octaves, and we're also going to bring the random down to zero because we don't want it to randomly trigger. Let's listen to this and see what it sounds like at the moment. So you can hear that buzz going over the top, you can also hear it kind of warbling with the sine wave. So we do need to do a few other things in terms of mixing. The first thing I want to do is increase the unison to 3 and bring the detune down so that the detuned waveforms are closer together. And this is going to give us some stereo width, get it out of that central space. And then also we're going to pass oscillator B only through the high pass filter on the filter section. So activate oscillator B, deactivate oscillator A, activate the filter, and let's do a high 12. And we're going to bring the cutoff up. So now this triangle is no way in any shape or form competing with that low frequency sub sine wave that we have in oscillator A. Increase the drive, increase the fatness, so we're pushing up that gritty texture of the triangle. And now let's have a listen. And you can see on the oscilloscope, we've got that nice full fat sine sub filling the positive and the negative space, but we also have the triangle adding those gritty textures at the top as well. So that's pushing it up in the mix. And I'm sure if you're listening on your phone or on your laptop or computer and you haven't got headphones on, you can hear those gritty textures coming through. And that is crucial when the average listener is probably going to be listening to music on their not very high quality sound system or phone. You can blend this triangle wave in. At the moment it's on the default level, but maybe you don't want it to be as present in the mix. So you could bring it down a little bit. So now we just have a little bit of a buzz over the top of the sine wave. Finally, some post-processing. I have a utility down here. I've put it on bass mono and whacked it up to 500 hertz so that any bass frequencies are mono below 500. And then I've also added Ableton's saturator just so that it pushes up the harmonics in the overall sound. And this is our final sub and let's have a listen to it with a break. And that, my friends, is how you make your subs fat. Instead of just using a single wave, add harmonics, add some layering, and a little bit of post-processing, and your subs will really stand out in the mix. I'm Becky Safe. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my teaching style and you got something out of it, please feel free to check out my Serum Sound Design course below. On the course, you'll learn how to synthesize your own drums, bass, pads, and leads. So please feel free to check it out. And if you did get something out of this video, you know what to do. Give it a like, give it a comment, and if you would like to see more content from me, please hit the subscribe and the bell button and you will be notified when I post new videos. I'm Becky Safe. Thank you very much. And I will see you for another one. Bye.